Good evening and welcome to Evergroove Live. I'm John Robinson and we're up here in beautiful Evergreen, Colorado once again. And we've got another great show for you tonight. We have got the band Difference tonight. Now, not difference, difference. See, because there's a difference between difference and difference. And the difference is difference with a T-S. It's like different, only plural, which there is no plural for the word difference, yet they stand before me. So they are here. Unique name. All right, I'm moving right on to thanking our sponsor, IdeaWorks. That's a name you've heard many times recently. They've been our sponsor for quite a while now. IdeaWorks is a full-service media duplication and packaging company. CDs, download cards, and merchandise. Check them out after the show, ideaworks.com. They've got a funny spelling to their name. I don't know if they can take spelling lessons, but Difference, can you take spelling lessons? What, I'm asking a band called Difference if they can take, okay. Uh, I just want to take this minute before they start, before we get started with the show, to talk about Evergroove Studio. Now, I don't work for Evergroove, so this is not a paid promotion. But I just want to talk a little about it because I, I've been in the band situation and all that. Yes, it was 100 years ago. But you've downloaded all your software. You've got yourself a nice condenser mic, and you're doing some demos, making some recordings, and that's all good. But I am here to assure you that the difference between what you are doing at home and what they can do for you here is night and day. Now, I always knew that, but I thought it's insanely expensive. So I looked online at their pricing, and it is crazy not expensive. You have to check out evergroove.com and see how reasonable it is. I just want to mention two particular advantages that I've always liked. One is shopping your demo around. If you can put on your demo, professionally recorded at Evergroove, guess whose demo goes to the top of the list? That's one. Number two is, are you a professional sound guy? Because we've got a professional sound guy here. And if you are not a professional sound guy, you're not going to be able to figure out that it's the reverb coming off the snare that is muddling the bass guitar or that doubling your vocals is what's making you sound like the Partridge family. Or not that there's anything wrong with sounding like the Partridge family, because there is not. They were one of the great rock bands of the 1970s, and they played their own instruments on TV every week, never faked a thing. Little 11-year-old Danny on bass guitar played every bass line 100% perfect, and all he ever did was this with his hand. So bass players out there, you just take note of that. And then, cute story later, little Danny was arrested for cocaine. That's so, he's so cute, like that. So my point, my point is twofold. Evergroove.com when you're ready to get serious about your recordings. And if you think I'm kidding about my love for the Partridge family, just tune in next month, okay? All right, Difference is our band tonight. They formed a little over a year ago as an indie rock band based in Denver, Colorado. Interesting fact, not little known, in 2014, Miguel Dakota, the lead singer of this band, performed on America's Got Talent, making it all the way to the finale, finishing in sixth place. And he formed this talented band shortly after. I'm done talking, folks. Let's hear it for Difference.
control what's happening to you Light of fire.
stepped on a set list and still made it. Difference, good. ladies and gentlemen, that was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, you know what, let's start out, let's just go right to introducing the band. Not me, but you, please. Right. Miguel Dakota, ladies and gentlemen, first of all. Yes, I'm Miguel Dakota. Um, this is Ryan Wagner to my right side. Hello, Ryan Wagner, <laughs> aka Wags. Yes. Um, this is Ryan Martin. Hey guys, Ryan Martin, also known as Marty. Also known as Wags. <laughs> <laughs> we share identities. Yeah. And then Brian Nolan on the drums. Go by Brian. He said, "How's it going?" Go by Brian. He doesn't have a microphone with him, so so he didn't he didn't get to. Uh, why don't we start out by just seeing what you guys have coming up, what you've got in the works, whether it's performance-wise, recording-wise. Just tell me a little bit about what your plans are for the early future here. Yeah, so in the near future, we have two shows coming up the first two weekends of April. Um, April 1st, we play uh, as a house band in a cool, really cool variety type show called Plethora at the Bug Theater in Denver. Nice. And then on the... April the 9th, I believe, um, we will be in Boulder um, supporting Mowale, which is, nice. he was on the top 10 for 93.3's Hometown for the Holidays with us, so. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, we're super stoked for that, and then we have some recording and releasing some music here in the future, so very excited for that. We'll be playing some of that music for everyone today, actually. Very cool, very yeah. cool. Um, probably the most important question of the interview would be, have you ever even heard of the Partridge family? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you have? I thought when I was saying that, in the middle of saying that, I was thinking, these guys are like, who in the hell are the... We're actually looking at buying their bus. So. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They renovated it. It's just, it rolls better than ever. Right on. <laughs> so, Miguel, just kind of a question for you. Um, after America's Got Talent, why did you form a band as well? Yeah, I know you're doing your solo thing still, but why the band as well? Um, well, I didn't really like form the band as much as we kind of came together. Um, but during the time that I was on the show and right before I actually the show aired and everything, um, Ryan and I started playing together. Um, and then Brian started playing with us on drums as well. Um, and so we were doing our, our three-piece thing in Monument area, Colorado Springs area. And uh, then afterwards, after the show, we started playing more shows and kind of doing stuff with the Miguel Dakota brand. Um, and Marty came along and started playing bass with us. And we just had him for one show, and then we were like, this guy, this guy can hang. So, so he kept playing with us. A, lo a and, lot of bands have bass players, too. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we heard it was a end, thing so. that people were doing, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we thought we'd try it out. Um, but then, yeah, we're, we actually, us three went to high school together as well. Um, they graduated a year ahead of me, so, yeah. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, that takes care of about four of my other questions. <laughs> but uh, I love it, though. I love this hard edge compared to the, you know, solos. I like the solo stuff you do, too, but this, I really love this. This is right in my wheelhouse, of course. Thanks. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the, uh, let me see. I wanted to ask about your... Uh, about your solo career, but I want to go first to the Light of Fire song. That's what I'm trying to think okay. of, is just the song we just we just heard. Um, I read about your influence. I, said, I didn't see the word Hendrix in there, but that's kind of what I felt. Not just tonight, but when I first saw it live, it felt a little Hendrixy to me. Is that any influence at all? Or oh, tell definitely. me about your yeah, other um, influences. Absolutely. I think all of us have a pretty good base of 70s rock music yeah? um, in our influence. Um, yeah. Late 60s, yeah. early 70s. We were all raised very correctly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And Listening to vinyl and stuff oh before yeah. all the hipsters came in and, you know, retrofied it. So yeah. who, uh, who else, influence-wise? Um, I, I also like a lot of soul and gospel stuff. I grew up in, in the South, and um, Bill Withers is one of my favorite songwriters. Nice. Um, and then just a lot of... A lot of bands like Led Zeppelin and, and the Doobie Brothers and Bad Company and and All things right. along those lines and um, we you know we do some of those covers we'll do uh, you know Talking Heads and um, Doobie Brothers Long Train Running and um, a lot of a lot of that era kind of plays into us writing our songs and the mentality of being good at your instrument and being able to create really cool music yeah exactly exactly. <laughs> 
that that makes me feel real at home now. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm now I'm feeling really comfortable. Uh, so what are the band's goals? And I know that's kind of a weird question, but uh, do you have any specific things in mind that you want to accomplish? Yeah, definitely. You want to talk a little bit on that, Ryan? I gotta focus on my personal goals first, <laughs> right? So I can right. Branch out to and those. the hygiene goals. But, yes. <laughs> hygiene, yeah. Glad you noticed that. <laughs> um. As a band, we just got to think of it more as a company now that we're starting to play more shows and network more and uh, get some better promotion out there. So thank you guys for doing that. It was a really good start for us. And yeah, it's been, it's been really cool because we love to have fun. And so we want as many people as we can to have fun with us. So, like, you know, that promotion piece of people coming out to shows and really enjoying what we're doing and that energy combined just, like, Helping right. people relieve stress and just have a good time is really a, a big focus of a, our band as well. So. Yeah, right. Do you have a mailing list people can get on? Uh, well, I have one personally, but which eventually I'll we'll have one for the band here pretty soon, pretty shortly, um, as we get our website and everything up. But for right now on Facebook uh, is the best way to follow us at, at Difference on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as well. Yeah, I was going to say, get on Facebook and you can you can see your up your upcoming shows. Yeah. Um, when you do the Talking Heads song, who sings? I do. Oh, do you? I do a pretty mm -hmm. good David Byrne. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> no, I, um, I I, we, kinda, we definitely make it our own. Um, and it, but it's a really fun song, and we get it actually requested a lot by a lot of people that have seen us play, um, just because we have so much fun with it. The crowd, you know, that burning down the house, yeah, yeah, that it always comes back to. Everyone's always cheering at that section and singing along. So, so if you want to hear it, come to one of our shows. <laughs> yeah. So this kind of feels like a little bit of a coming out party for you guys. This big live yeah, show here, yeah, it's uh, so just kind of a homecoming rather than yeah, you know, yeah. Just well, we're honored reinventing to reinventing ourselves. Yeah, we're honored to be involved in it. Um, can I? I just want to quickly ask you a couple questions about your Amer America's Got Talent run because it was so impressive. And tens, uh, you guys, you know the show. Tens of thousands of people audition for that show just to make it on the show is quite an accomplishment. You got four yeses. I could go on and on. You went through all these stages. Just unbelievable run on that show. Um, so. I guess my first question would be, how did it change your life? I know you've had that question asked a million times, but what did it change your life? Yeah, it definitely did have a huge impact. Um, just upon my f focus on music, um, it grew my fan base, which allowed me um, to do a lot of things with performing and playing my music and getting it recorded. And um, it was just really big in both the aspect of my personal growth as a musician and wanting to be better and, and getting to see a lot of really great performers firsthand from the guest artists who would come on the show and perform and seeing how they did, they did things and getting to perform with Lenny Kravitz was pretty incredible. And so um, just things like that where I was getting basically like this mini music industry boot camp. Well, I, I don't want to say mini, just like a music industry boot camp that was pretty right. big and really um, allow me to see things that I probably would never get to see until like maybe 10 years down the road or right right or yeah something like that you know so I saw Lenny Kravitz I was in the third row front and center on a Lenny at a Lenny Kravitz concert and he broke a string so if you talk to him could you tell him I want to do over because <laughs> that it totally threw his guitar Rewind. out of tune and the whole thing was a mess hey <laughs> on and just one more America's Got Talent deal, and that is uh, I always wondered if the judges have any in interaction with the people on the show when you're, you know, when the camera goes off. Like, do I see the judges as much as you, or does the camera go off and you guys have some interaction, or is Don't it just nothing? Don't you have nothing? a pretty good story about you and Heidi? <laughs> uh, yeah, no. yeah, I wonder. I Don't, I however, <laughs> most people would like to say that I did, because... Who wouldn't like to say that they did have more interaction with Heidi Klum? But well, I, um, I saw some things that she <laughs> said about her heart melted. She said, <laughs> "Yeah, there were a lot of yeah." yeah. Um, but my, no, my we we did get a little bit <laughs> more interaction with them and um, got to talk with each of them um, a little bit, and they're all really awesome. The great TV personalities, yeah. great um, business people. You know the things that they do in their respective industry and they 
all were very just positive toward your goals as whatever it was, a musician or hand balance or whatever it was, that you just try and put your all in it and kind of make it different than everyone else's so that people um, kind of get a glimpse into you when you perform, you know? I always kind of assume once the camera went off that Howie Mandel was just a dick. No, he's no? actually, he's super nice. And even Howard Stern was was really uh, supportive of me off, even though he's kind of harsh all the time yeah, yeah, after yeah. my performances. He was he was pretty supportive off, off camera. So. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming out, all of you. And uh, that was just two songs, so we've got a ton more. So can oh, we yeah. get right to that again? Let's Definitely. All right, folks, once again, Difference. Where's your mind? Where's your heart and soul? Give it all, nothing's left, now it's out of control Out of control It's a fight to the death, better grab a hold Make it out of your life, now you're good as gold Good as gold
everyone clapping at home we appreciate it virtual claps yeah so this next song we're about to play is called la 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 and it's kind of about how sometimes we can allow life to get mundane and not really follow our heart or our dreams we kind of just go through life and try and make money and try and make people happy but in reality everyone's life has a purpose and it's beyond just the la 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 of the world Sing along at home. Where's the world we were promised? Oh, so long ago. There's golden diamonds open oh, where's the soul 
I mean, all wound up. <laughs> more, more, more. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. Camera. Camera. And people behind it. Yes. <laughs> this next one is, is called Hey Now. And uh, Ryan's going to take the lead vocal on this one. That was Marty on the lead vocal on the last one. Killing it. Superb. This next one's kind of punk rock, so get them punk rock shoes on, huh?
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's a lot more band vibey and less crowd vibey. Yeah. What's up, guys? It's a good I thing we all have good vibes. Yeah, I haven't talked to you in a little bit. <laughs> this uh, next tune, written by Mr. Ryan Wagner over here, we call him Wags. It's called uh, All in My Head. And uh, this was on the record we put out under my name, Miguel Dakota. It's called Love and Freedom. Um, we recorded that in, in Monument, where we kind of the band's hometown, um, with our friend Chris Andrews. And he really did a great job with the record, and we had a, a great time recording it. Um, and this is one of the favorites from that. It's the first one on the album. Um, Light of Fire, which you heard earlier, is also on that album. Um, but this one. Is, is written by Mr. Mr. Wags over here playing lead guitar and uh, hope everyone enjoys it. Great one. You get a lot of requests for that one. Wags knows how to write a good song, that that's for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate that. Um, Learned from the best. Yeah. So the next song we're about to play is called Dreamers. And I uh, really enjoy this one. It's really fun. Um, and it has some of my favorite harmonies that we do on it, which is really cool. Um, but it's kind of about Dreamers is about everyone and your ability to dream and kind of get past the hard knocks of life and when people, the things people say and 
do and everything around you kind of gets hard and you feel like there's nothing left to do, you push through that and getting on the other side of that and coming to your purpose and, and allowing yourself to dream, um, you find that the good stuff's on the other side. And so this song is called Dreamers. Should we use a beer bottle slide for this one? <laughs> uh -uh. Only live set. <laughs> yeah, it's a live move. <laughs> and twos, we walk away unbruised. You said you always knew we were the ones accused.
if you wanna get loose Yeah, let's do that part again You gotta squeeze the fruit If you want the juice You gotta break your bones If you wanna get loose That was a brand new one. Hope you guys liked it. It's Thank you guys Dreamers. for having me. Yes. All right, fellas. How you feeling? Feeling good. Good, Wags. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm, I'm <laughs> feeling good, Marty. Feeling great. Good. This next tune is uh, one that for a while we called Arctic Style because it kind of reminded us of the Arctic Monkeys, um, but the actual name of the song is Finding Soul. Um, it's a riff that Wags came up with, and we kind of all collaborated on it. And, um, it's really fun. It's definitely a fun song. So. It's a good one. Remember what Wags said earlier about your dancing shoes? Put them on again. Yeah. You should don't take them off, off, but put them yeah. on again. Maybe like a onesie or something? Put that on? Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Cool wig. Hardwood floors. <laughs>
to reality. Yeah. Dancing shoes off. <laughs> Put my working boots on. <laughs> working yeah. We'll, we'll just, you can, you can always dance if you want to. <laughs> uh, bring your friends too. They can dance if they want to. <laughs> but if your friends don't dance, you know. If they don't dance. No, they know. <laughs> Everyone's invited. It's a free, free party. <laughs> this one is called Heart, and uh, I think uh, it's going to be a single soon, hopefully. Um, this, is, this is the one that we want to release, I believe, first. And uh, yeah, it's kind of about uh, not being a fool when you're in love. But being cool. <laughs> that something. should be in the song. Yeah. That should be a bumper sticker. <laughs>
little tail end there. <laughs> That's right, I'm back. Difference, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Type difference in and then type Facebook. And you will get them on Facebook and you'll see where they're gonna be. This is fantastic, baby. This is the truth. I'm sitting five, I'm sitting 15 feet away and it sounds every bit as good as it does to you at home. So you cannot fake this. I thought you could fake it, <laughs> but you cannot fake it. So uh, listen, I've got to thank a couple of people real quick. Uh, first, Carrie Ray and the gang over at IdeaWorks for their sponsorship. Listen, if you're in the music industry, you got to get on their website. If you're not on the m in the music industry, they've got a lot of merchandise and things you can buy anyway. It's just cool. Ideaworks.com. I want to thank Brad and Jenny Smalling with Evergroove Studio. Listen, two nicer people you will never meet record at Evergroove. Did I say that how you told me to, Brad? Thank you. Uh, no, yay, 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 yay. Uh, listen, we've got another fantastic show coming up for you in April, and uh, we're going to close it out with one more from, are we going to close it out with one more? Yeah. Yeah. Is it called downtown after yeah, you, we're, we're you named it because I live downtown? Downtown. downtown. Yeah. All we'll right, ladies and gentlemen, downtown. one more from Difference, downtown. Thank you, John. Thank you. Maybe, maybe, Don't mind me. maybe we could treat the people <laughs> with a little talking heads at the end. Who knows? <laughs> John said, yeah. This song is also off that Love and Freedom album um, that we recorded with Chris Andrews, and this one is, is called Downtown. And uh, it's a funky one, written by Mr. Ron Wagner.
Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. If everyone doesn't mind, we'll, we'll throw a little cover in here. Do a little talking heads action. All You've right. been, we've officially been dared. Dare accepted. You Just for you, Brad. And all those fans out there. This is a thank you. This is a thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this is a fun one that we like to do. Is it cool if I move around with the mic a little bit? Is that all right? Okay.
All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Idea Works. Thank you. Thank you to Evergroup Studios. Thank you to everyone watching. We really appreciate it. We're Difference. Brian, Marty, Wags, I'm Miguel. Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in.